I've flown to Turkey to take a look at a yacht called Old Salt. She's for sale with my colleague Richard Callender and was built by a shipyard called Aegean Yacht. Lying in Bodrum Bay by the town's historic castle, she presented an impressive sight, a true gentleman's yacht built to a totally custom design and launched just five years ago. I was eager to take my first look at her. As a YouTubing yacht broker, there are two things that I'm interested in when I visit a yacht that I've not seen before, built by a shipyard that I don't have a lot of experience with. First of all, I put on my YouTuber's cap and I try to see the best way to present the yacht in an engaging manner to you. But then I put on my yacht broker's cap and I ask myself, is this a yacht that I can present to a potential client? Is it well built? Has it been well maintained? Well, to answer those questions, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about this really unique vessel. And for those of you who leave comments on my YouTube channel saying that you'd like to see the engine room and the crew quarters, you'll be pleased to know that we're going to do just that. In fact, we're going to take a look at the entire layout of this vessel. 34 meters long and built from steel, Old Salt was built to cruise. This is not a fair weather production yacht that will burn through an entire oil field getting from Monaco to Saint-Tropez. She was engineered with long range and comfort in mind, fuel economy and safety. The engines are Yanmar units of 600 horsepower each. The captain tells me that they consume just 100 litres an hour at 10 knots with both engines and one generator running. That gives a range of about 2,000 nautical miles. The maximum speed, on the other hand, is 13 knots. And while we're on the subject of the engines, just take a look at the engine room. Sensibly sized for ease of maintenance and well equipped too. Just about every motor yacht has fuel filters, of course. But Old Salt also has this unit, produced by Swedish company Alfa Laval. It uses centrifuge to further clean the fuel. It's a really useful addition if you want to travel extensively with the yacht. Just aft of the engine room is the crew quarters and the galley. The galley is both well proportioned and well equipped, even including a large walk-in refrigerator. This goes for the crew accommodation too. Three crew cabins, each one with their own bathroom and a crew mess too. This is the kind of arrangement you would normally find on larger yachts. And look at this, a very easily accessible hatch to reach the steering gear. This is great for maintenance, of course, but you can also use it as an emergency steering station if you really need to. Let's move into the interiors though, and the yacht's beam of just over eight meters really shows here with an extremely spacious main lounge area. The owner of the yacht wanted a decor that is natural and low key with a subtle nod to traditional Turkish cabinetry. The high gloss wooden finishing and soft Italian fabrics accomplishes just this. And above all, I was struck by the amount of space available here in the event that a future buyer wants to add armchairs or even an inside dining table. Further forward is a lobby area that corresponds with a side door and the yacht's sea stairs. A day head. And then we enter a very impressive main deck master stateroom. Again, this is a simple, spacious, practical and solidly constructed area in keeping with the rest of the yacht and of course, including an ensuite bathroom. 
Below deck, there are four more staterooms of various sizes. I expected these to be of similar sizes, but was surprised to find two twin cabins, one very nicely sized forward VIP stateroom, and this enormous starboard side VIP stateroom. Needless to say, each cabin has its own ensuite bathroom. And now let's take a look at the upper deck. Some would call it the bridge deck since the bridge is in fact located here. Another day head is positioned on this deck and then this charming sky lounge complete with an office area that leads out to the upper aft deck. This may not be the sort of yacht that I usually cover on this YouTube channel, but I'm very happy that I am covering it. It's kind of resurrected a conversation I have from time to time with my colleagues. You see, I think that the yachting industry can be in danger of losing itself in the pursuit of technological advancements and expensive accessories. Do you really need to have balconies that slide open on every flat surface of the yacht? Do you really need to have complicated launch and retrieval systems for the tenders? Do you really need to have a titanium clad Steinway piano that's molecularly fused to platinum cabinetry? Do you really need any of those things just to enjoy being at sea? The owner of Old Salt knew what he wanted. He wanted something simple and robust, comfortable and functional. And sitting here right now, I have to say, I think he made the right choice. I loved taking a moment to sit on the upper aft deck of Old Salt, enjoying the sea air and the magnificent views. And it's on the deck that most owners will spend most of their time. Honestly, there was something here that put me in the mood of an Agatha Christie novel, the uncluttered teak decks the beautifully varnished mahogany capping rails on polished stainless steel handrails, and this gorgeous observation terrace in front of the bridge. All such romantic areas to enjoy your time on board. A little further forward of that observation terrace is the tender storage area, where two 3.6 meter tenders and a small sailing yacht are located. The main aft deck is possibly one of the most romantic features of the yacht though. Not many rounded sterned yachts have been built in recent years since the industry has been going in the direction of using the transom to store the water toys. Positioning the water toys on the bow though allows for this gorgeous aft deck complete with a spacious dining table that can easily accommodate 12 people. I don't want to stop talking about the deck though without commenting on the deck hardware. Once again, robust, seaworthy equipment. Old Salt is in fact MCA compliant and also has RENA unrestricted certification. Many modern builders will hide the ribs and the reinforcements of the hull. Personally, I think they look great and add to that nautical feel of the vessel along with the huge freeing ports and these pipes that can be seen all over the main deck are actually breathers for the fresh and grey water tanks. The black tank has a separate system with carbon filters. At the beginning of this video, I said that when I put my broker's cap on, I look to see whether a yacht is well built or whether it's been well maintained. Old salt, is a very robust yacht and you just can't fake that there's clearly been a regular thorough maintenance schedule on board. In my opinion, and I've visited literally hundreds of yachts, there is a correlation between the state of the crew and the state of the yacht. Scruffy crew, and very often it's a bit of a scruffy yacht as well. In the case of Old Salt, the crew didn't know that when I came here, I'd want to film the engine room and the crew quarters. As a matter of fact, usually I don't film those areas. And yet when I got here, both of those areas were in 
immaculate condition and the captain was enthusing about what a great reliable yacht this is to go to sea with. I must admit, I'm more than a little jealous of my colleague who represents this yacht for sale and if you do want more details about Old Salt, he is the best person to contact. His name is Richard Callender and his email address will be on screen in a moment.